good morning. Thank you, everybody. You need your um, folder, the blue paper, a circle maker, and your um, safety glasses. Why do you guys think we need safety glasses today? Yes, we are. We're going to do a lab today. So today our first job is to do a Venn diagram. That's what you need the circle maker for. And we're going to compare and contrast endothermic and exothermic reactions. Then we are going to go into the lab and do one more demonstration. And you'll need your goggles because we'll be using a chemical that um, will burn if you get it in your eyes. Okay? And then the last thing, if we have time, we will um, work on is um, making a graph, well, reading a graph and what that means in terms of the chemical reaction using a different way to describe a chemical reaction. So we've been using words, we've been using equations, now we're going to use graphs. Is everybody okay? Yeah. All right. So first thing, um, we, of all, first thing, we started yesterday on this chart, and we're going to continue working with this chart today. So ye yesterday we talked about the three reactions that we did, and we added information about the observations, whether it was endothermic, exothermic, and our reasoning. So why did I say it was endothermic or exothermic? So this fourth box down here is going to be for your lab today. You're going to record your thinking there, okay? So let's start um, by making a Venn diagram. So. You have a circle maker. All I need you to do, please, is make two overlapping circles. And while you're doing that, I will set mine up on the board. Okay? So please take a minute to make your Venn diagram and then please label it. So the two things we're going to be thinking about for a Venn diagram are endothermic and. Thank you. Very good. Okay. So what I'd like to do first is put information that we already know onto our Venn diagram. So um, Nizamana started us out with um, something about endothermic reaction and Yadup as well. So what do we know about endothermic? It feels cold. It feels cold. And so what feels cold, the reactants or the products? Products, the things we end with, right? So products feel cold. Okay, good. What about an exothermic reaction? How would the products feel in that case? Warm, Warm or hot even, right? So the products feel warm or hot. Excellent. Okay. Anything else I can add that you already know? That's true. All the reaction we've done so far do add water, and today's does as well. All right. So let's write that down. Nizamana, that was one I hadn't thought of, but it's true. Okay. Okay, so we'll write often involves adding Water. I'm going to just put H2O because I'm a little lazy. Okay? Okay, so they both have to do with heat, right? They both have to do with heat changes. So one, we measured, we felt that it got cold, and the other one, we felt it got hot, right? So when I say endo, that means in, and thermo means heat, heat in. And exo means out, and thermo means heat heat, so heat out, okay? So we can put in the middle, involves, whoa, can't read it, heat change, okay? If you can't read it, I can write it someplace else for you. I'll write it down here, guys, because that's incomprehensible. Okay. 
Anybody have anything else we can add? All right, I think you guys did a very good job. I'm just going to give you another couple of seconds to get caught up. So now what we're going to do is focus on endothermic reactions for a little bit. Okay. Endothermic reactions. So I'll read the introductory part and we'll see if there's anything you need to add to your chart. Endothermic reaction, a reaction in which the products have more stored energy than the reactants. Huh, is that something new or something you already have? New, new right, Tusa, okay. So you're going to add that to your chart, okay. So you're going to add it on the endothermic side. And um, do we need to write a reaction in which? No, thank you. So the part that's most important is the products have more stored energy than the reactants. Okay? The next part, the reaction absorbs energy from the surrounding environment. New information or something you already have? Okay, I think you have absorbs, right? Okay, so you might want to add absorbs energy from the surrounding environment, okay? Or just write from environment would probably be enough to help you. Okay? You can just add from environment, it's fine. Okay. And the products use, the ener use up this energy to create chemical bonds, okay? So, going to underline create chemical bonds. That's the part you want to add. Okay, the last sentence says, the products are colder than the reactants. Is that new or something you already have? Already have, thank you. So you don't need to add it. All right, so you guys did a good job remembering some things from yesterday. So what you see is that we're now talking more about the energy and what that energy is being used for. Okay, and that's going to relate to our graphs. Okay? Is everybody okay with this slide? Rashawn, you need a little longer? Are you good? You good? All right. All right, so I'm going to erase that. Maybe. Or maybe not. Yay. Okay, so now, ladies and gentlemen, we are on exothermic reaction. Would someone like to read the first sentence for me? Thank you, Sala. Okay, is that, thank you for reading, is that new information or something you already have on your chart? You don't have that? Okay, so what would we write? Okay, so products have less stored energy than reactants. Next thing says, the reaction releases energy when bonds are broken. New or old, or a little of both? New. New? And um, what part's new? Okay, bonds are broken. So you see that in the um, endothermic reaction, bonds were being formed, right? And in this one, they're being broken, okay? Okay, and the last one, did somebody read that one for us? Yes, the products are harder than the reaction. Okay, and what do you guys think? New, old? Old, right? We already have it, right? So we are ready to do our little experiment. Does anybody have any questions about endothermic and exothermic? No. Okay, so you see that they have a lot of things that are opposites. One's hot, one's cold. One's breaking bonds, one's forming bonds. Okay? One's releasing energy, one's absorbing energy. Okay. Okay. So this is what we're going to do now. And um, so for this, I need you to um, move into the lab area. You are going to need your goggles, please, and they need to be on your eyes. 
And um, you also are going to need your chart that we were using um, Friday and yesterday, okay? Um, just for um, logistical purposes, if you could avoid that back table, um, that would be great. You can have two or three people at a table. So please move to an area that has a setup, avoiding the one in the back of the room, please. So ladies and gentlemen, I apologize that the printing is a little small up here, but um, what it says is, using a chemical scoop, your teacher will transfer, transfer a few pellets of sodium hydroxide to a test tube half full of water. So what part of that do you need to do? What part of that do you need to do? Sodium hydroxide to the test tube half Who's going to add the sodium hydroxide? Ms. Clark, right, one of your teachers. What are you going to do? Test tube half full of water. So at your table, you will find that we left you a test tube rack, a test tube, and a beaker. In the beaker, it's water. It's just regular water. You're going to fill your test tube half full. Once it's half full, Ms. Clark is going to come and bring you some of the chemical, which is called sodium hydroxide. Okay? Then you need to be immediately ready to do the next step. And the next step says carefully feel the side of the test tube. This is important. Listen, scientists. It's important that you touch the side and the bottom, not getting the chemical on you. Okay? So Ms. Clark's going to be careful when she puts it in so that it goes in the tube, and we're going to be careful not to touch the chemical. Is everybody okay? All right, then you're going to um, record your observations on your chart, okay? So let's get started, half full, and then Ms. Clark will bring you the chemical. Okay, so write your observations on your chart, please. What do you think? You don't feel anything? Did Miss give you some more? No. She'll give you a little more. Okay, if everybody could stop for a moment, please. I'm just going to show you where you're going to record your information on your chart. Okay, everybody stop. Look at me, please. Listen, please. Okay, so on the chart, we're, we're writing our observations in this box, what you observe. Then I want you to decide if you think it's endothermic or exothermic. Then I want you to explain your reasoning. Why do you think it's endothermic? Why do you think it's exothermic? Based on what you felt, what senses you used. Does that make sense? Okay, so you're continuing with this. Now you're recording your observations. The next thing it says, dispose of the materials as directed by your teacher. So your directions are that Ms. Clark or I will come over and take the tube from you. That's all you need to do. And then you're going to continue by filling in your chart. Does anyone have questions? All right, good job. Once you've felt it and you feel like you are done with that part, then when we take the tube from you, you can um, take your goggles off. Okay, so now you've filled in the, your observations, everyone did it? Yes. Did everyone decide whether they think endothermic or exothermic? Yes. Okay, and then what about your reasoning? Did you fill it in? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what box do we need to do? The, the, the balanced chemical equation, right. So let's see, what chemical did um, Miss Clark give you? Sodium, Sodium. Sodium hydroxide. Okay, so does anybody know the chemical formula for that? Sodium hydroxide? Na. Na, thank you. And what about hydroxide? Na. I hear random guessing. So let's use our tools. Oh, thank you for taking out the tool. OH, thank you. All right. So we're going to add it to our box. 
And you said sodium. OH. Thank you. And what did you add to the tube? Water. Water. And then I'm going to make an arrow. What do we say when we see an arrow? Oh, Yields. Yields. Okay. And then um, we need to make sure this is balanced. What is the charge on sodium? Water. Na. Okay. Is everybody okay? Yeah. I think it's balanced. You think it's balanced? It's balanced. Does anyone agree with Yad up? You agree with Yad up? Okay. It is balanced. Good. Okay. So now, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to describe the experiment. Sorry, I'm really stressed. Okay. So you're going to describe your reaction. You can do this on the next page in your notebook. So you have your <coughs> chart. Costco, could I use your book for a second, please? So you have your title of your book. You have the what do you see. Then you have your chart stapled in. And then on this side right here, you're going to describe the reaction we just did. All right. All right, so let's see what it says. It says, please choose three of the following sentence frames to complete. So the first one, I noticed that, is one of your choices. I found it interesting that, based on the evidence, I would classify the reaction as, then you pick either endothermic or exothermic, and then say why. This reaction reminds me of, what might it remind you of? Yeah, so the other times when we did the reactions, like the hot pack and the cold pack, and when Ms. Clark and I froze the Erlenmeyer flask. And last one, um, blank proves that. That should have a little star in front of it, guys. Okay. Blank proves that blank, and I wonder why. So how many do you have to do, Pasco? Three. 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 All right, so please take some time to write the three. Then what I'm going to have you do is pair up with someone and share your sentences. <coughs> okay? Any questions? All right. Ms. Clark and I can come around and help you if you're needing help. Okay. So you're trying to write three sentences so that somebody who wasn't here could read your description and know what happened in the lab, why you think it's endothermic or exothermic, Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, please stop for a moment. Look at me, please. Listen, please. Okay, um, it seems that people are starting to finish up their sentences. What um, I would like you to do, please, before you leave, is find somebody to read your sentences to. So let's pretend Daisy and Isela, for some strange reason, chose to work together. Then the, um, Daisy would read her sentences to Isela, and Isela would read her sentences to Daisy. At the beginning of class tomorrow, I'm going to ask everybody to read one of their sentences. Okay? So find someone to practice with, please. And then once you've read them once, then you can clean up after you practice.
Once you've read your sentences to your partner, you feel ready for tomorrow, then you can clean up and turn your folders in. You did a very nice job today.